In a world where comics, movies, games, rumors, and Kardashians come at you 24-7, three champions will rise to defend you from wasting precious time, money, and emojis. BK, Nate, and Derek will show you how to do it. The Player Way. Ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between, it's on once again, Patron once again. This is your boy BK at Play Life Your Way on Instagram. And I'm back with my co-captains, Derek. Corrupting the system on Instagram, you already know. And Nate. Hi. Um, hi. <laughs> As always, so excited, especially to be in Atlanta, man. Congratulations. Yeah. Welcome to the studio, I man. I took my wagons east. <laughs> in, search, in search of a better life yeah <laughs> uh, yeah man so if this is your first time listening to us shame on you go back and listen from the beginning get your grind on before you get your shine on but we are shining over here in episode 14 we're almost episode 15 i don't know why 15 sounds more major than 14 but hey we're gonna go with that for now this is the Player Way Podcast. What this podcast is about is helping you understand how to do your leisure time. The Player Way. Okay, so if you want to learn how to say, hey, I'm, I worked a long 40 to 50 hour week, maybe sometimes 60 hour week, maybe time I worked a double last night and I just want to be able to have an amazing and make my the most of my Saturday and Sunday. That's what this is for. Five hours of summer in a short little podcast, man, once a week. So that's what we're about to get into. So if no further ado... Derek, what you, you got for us this week, master bro? Man, uh, well, I have uh, I fell in love with a uh, an anime on Netflix that was not broken into uh, there was not a movie broken up into a series, uh, Knights of Cydonia, which I know this came out uh, I want to say late 2015. Uh, it's already had season two, season three is coming up actually pretty soon, and uh, this thing the the animation on there is very similar to Ajin. That other one that you and I have discussed in the past on, on this very podcast, on the Player Way, and this thing is—it's really incredible. It, it starts out this this takes place 600 years after the planet Earth has split in two, sent off several seed ships to hopefully find a new uh, place to live, and there's this entity that is just pretty much all but decimated humanity, and there's only one mineral in the entire universe that can even do anything to this. Uh, creature and it just um, the musical score is great great opening theme song closing credits it's just very entertaining I'm all the way up to episode 9 and I just started this thing like Tuesday wait a minute so and, it's, uh, is what, what what color is the substance which substance is it a blue substance is, did you say a blue substance Bitch, what? I never said anything about a blue substance I think should he's I have talking said something about, about a blue substance the mineral is there a blue that, substance that I you think know? a blue mineral is it I like think a blue he's talking m- about the mineral the mineral, the mineral that, that you were talking about yeah, I, I just said it. I just said mineral. Uh, there, you know this, why? This, you know why I thought blue mineral because it sounds a lot like what they have to do for the White Walkers over in um, Game of Thrones because they have to mine a certain type of substance as well that is the only thing that can kill these White Walkers. So it sounds Walk like up. it sounds like a lot of idea sharing in the uh, in the uh, blogosphere these days. Yeah. Well, of course, this is in the future in space, and this involves mecha robot Gundam style fighting. And, uh, follows the story of a, a very interesting character and the, the whole it takes a minute to really kind of grasp what's going on but but once you do it's it, it drew me in uh it's really cool I, I sent nate a message earlier this week even though i know he doesn't really watch anime i feel like he might have an interest in this one oh, you and said, if he yeah. doesn't um i'll just shame him for not sharing my opinion and that's obviously what we're supposed to do as humans right yeah, there there are different levels to um, anime nerddom, and like mech anime is like a whole nother level. Yeah, that one's. I don't watch many. The only other thing that I've even seen close to this, I mean, outside of like Voltron, I don't really count that one. Is um, Old Noah yeah. Zero, which is also actually yeah. really cool too. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't follow many mecha style. Like this is a very this is very different than what I would normally style my Bleach, Blue Exorcist, like My Hero Academia, Dragon That's Ball Super, up. those type, Ajin, like those type. Which Ajin is actually really cool too, but um, great action scenes. But anyway, that, that's what I've been uh, soaking up my time with, uh, 
and still getting my character strong in uh, Borderlands 2. Nice. Shout out to uh, Crazed Griffin in that game. <laughs> what you got going on? Uh, what did you do this week, Nate? Well, I was, um, not much. I didn't watch anything. Well, I watched the uh, new trailers that have been coming out since San Diego Comic Con. Oh, uh, yes. I, I've been waiting all week. If, if you If you are not aware of how the show works we are this is normally we would be texting and like calling each other once a week or more than that to talk about these things but like every time we get into a pretty deep conversation Derek as the associate producer jumps on like the the feed and is like stop talking right now save it for the show save it for the show so uh it, it, so I've been saying with the chest exactly. so I've been saving talking about all of these glorious trailers that came out just before Comic Con and during the very beginnings of Comic Con, so tell us uh, what what's the one that caught your fancy the most, man? Uh, just for my own personal bias, but the Defenders from Marvel, absolutely. Oh my God, that trailer was just everything. It 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 was everything that the Inhumans tried to do with their second trailer. Yeah, which is a trailer they released a day before the uh, the Defenders one came. And like out. they gave up trying to sell the show and was like, "Hey, it's yeah. in IMAX." Oh yeah, for the first Dude, twenty you... seconds, everything's bigger in IMAX. Man, like these old school nineties, like turn of the century, like showing the small screen with the black bars at the top and bottom and like then it grows as if somehow you crop all they did is cropped out some of the video it's the same video mm-hmm. it's just they just cropped out less of it for the promo no we will is not this take produced by you. michael bay is this produced by michael bay because <laughs> it seems like it was every transformers IMAX. movie did this <laughs> <laughs> listen if it was produced by michael bay we might actually be excited for it because at least that car scene where he coughs or hums on the car it actually would do a nice 360 that's like the one application where you need a michael bay like 360 yes. and we don't have it show the explosion yeah, it's the low sweeping shot still doesn't look good <laughs> angular which uh, by the way we never we never did talk about the fact that um in avengers uh age of ultron they totally stole michael bay's shtick with that final, like, when the final battle starts, and it's just, yeah. like, this amazing, like, carousel of superheroes Showing smashing metal. Yeah, dude. Yes. <laughs> that was, like, that's a, to me, I think that's the sad thing about Age of Ultron not getting the shine that I just think it deserved to get. Because there are there are moments like that that are pretty iconic. You change, but you don't know how. Yeah, man, I loved Ultron in that man. Shout out but to let's, shout let's out to Red for, from, like, the, from the, that Defenders trailer. Shout though. out to Red from the man. Blacklist. <laughs> that Defenders trailer just yeah. got oh, me yeah. so amped. Absolutely, like man. I even was excited to see Iron Fist and even a little bit of Jessica Jones. But even though I just nothing against Jessica Jones the show, I just don't like her character. But that means that obviously she's a decent enough actress for to make me not like Jessica Jones as a character. So that means that obviously it's good enough. But yeah. to even see her like doing work, I was just like, oh. I'm excited. It, you lit up, and for the sake of pausing on this, Nate, you lit up my night when you sent me that. <laughs> Pause. Indeed. I got you, brother. Dang it. It was, it was for the yeah. sake of pausing. Um, by but the, it was worth it. And then speaking of taking a pause for the cause, outside of that trailer... We got a little taste of the Punisher, mm-hmm. and uh, John Bernthal mm. made his surprise at Comic Con uh, earlier this past weekend. Um, it was great to see him on there. He's such a gracious actor. Like for a guy who's playing one of the most, you know, get, help me out with the words, Derek. I mean, this guy uh, brutal visual. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Ever thought of? And I mean, he plays murderer. Him. He, Murderer, he plays uh, him genocide, so like what, he plays him so um, militaristically that like you don't feel bad when he kills people, which you should, and then you feel guilty, but then not because it's awesome. And then he's also a certain amazing actor that we're just all used to. Why is he still coming? Why is still coming? It ain't what it's, it's yeah. Why is he still coming? Like, protect the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'm just, I mean, John Berthold, man, amazing actor. I'm really ready to see. I love how they give you a taste when he did his appearance at Comic-Con of how the, you would think that Marvel, it was Marvel's idea to have the Punisher as a standalone. It was actually Netflix's Mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. Netflix was like, hey, uh, that guy is an amazing actor. He needs his own show. 
And Marvel was like, uh, make more money? Absolutely. No problem. We can do that. We print money anyway. Well, I think they also saw that the reaction from... Oh, yeah. I mean, he was definitely the best part of Daredevil Season 2. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hands down. So, yeah. Um, so, shout out to them. Uh, any other trailers came out that you guys were excited about? I was excited about the... Um, now, this wasn't specifically... Well, this might have been um, uh, American Horror Cult. Uh, that that trailer uh, or I say trailer that was more of a um, promotional video very similar to the Pacific Rim 2 promotional Whoa. video starring John Boyega Man. and in my opinion the next Denzel Washington and I have no problem saying that and I will stand by that until he proves me wrong but for right now he is the next Denzel Washington and I am very excited about a Pacific Rim 2 I really like the original movie it's gigantic robots fighting gigantic monsters I don't need much more of a storyline. I mean, Charlie Hunnam was in there for, you know, he was in that movie. He was present and accounted for <laughs> in that movie. But so was <laughs> Idris Elba. Nothing against Charlie. He played a great Jax, but he is Jax. He he just, he got the Jason Alexander business. He's Jax. Like, yeah. He's not King Arthur. He's not anything else. He's just Jax. But anyway, Pacific Rim, I really like the original movie. Yeah. And I'm really excited about this, especially how they spun it. It was very join our cause and i i don't know if your opinion was the same as this but when i heard them specifically say we didn't wait for our heroes to fall from the sky i'm like are they just specifically taking a shot at dc and marvel on that but because we are just humans and we created our heroes here as big as a mountain to specifically say that we didn't wait for our heroes to fall out of the sky i feel like that was just like all right well we're in this mix too but i don't i mean they're in the <laughs> a big mix but i thought that john was, boyega yeah i thought that was no a more. nice I thought that was a nice thing to say and a nice jab. Unfortunately, it didn't. It was. It's not the right movie to do that with. Nope. Nope. Like you're coming in with a sequel to a movie that was subpar generally by the masses, and you're going to take a jab at somebody who has a decade and twelve billion in the bank accounted for. (laughs) And I hope for. And and I hope for John Boyega that the movie does well because if it doesn't do so well, it's not good for his career. But honestly, he's got Detroit. He has the Last Jedi. He has uh, he. Um, there's something else he's working on next year, which I hate that I'm oh, no. drawing a blank right now. But I'm I'm excited for it. I, I enjoy him as an actor. I feel he's very versatile, and and I, I you know I, I'm still yeah. a kid when I go see those type of movies. Yeah, I, I I know he's a much better actor than the namesake that I'm about to talk about. But I don't want him to end up like Hayden Christensen. Where he had these for sure slated I don't like sand. <laughs> where he had these <laughs> slated films coming out, and then he had these other things that were coming out with one of which was with Samuel Jackson that was supposed to be amazing, and it didn't turn out so good for him. So you know, I hope for John Boyega's sake, you know, sake that uh, things turn out good for him, and that uh, I want to like Pacific Rim too. I was not a fan of Pacific Rim one. Um, again, it was that mecha. Gundam type of anime feel and that's hard to get in for the average person who watches anime or doesn't watch anime at all so yeah well I liked it (laughs) if 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 someone's gonna go see Godzilla or King Kong they'll see Pacific Rim you know what I mean like I mean it's it's a monster movie yeah I mean what else say what else do you need like don't hold we're, we're not going to get a Schindler's List. We're looking at beasts that are 500 feet tall, fighting in the ocean. Ooh! That can and, stand. And, I, and, and a good transition it, that you mentioned that is I got some insiders, and I'm not going to mention any names or how I know this person, but um, Rampage is in production. Dwayne Johnson, Rampage, adapted from the video game with those tall monsters destroying buildings. It is in production. In a certain city that starts with an A and ends with an A, so it is going down. Does it start right now. with an A and end in Atlanta. Uh, it might, it might, it might. That might be a little too close, but I'm just saying. Oh, okay. Does it rhyme with? Santa? If you like monster movies, Rampage is coming soon. No trailers yet, but just a little insider from a city that makes a lot of movies. And to be specific, this is the Rampage arcade. T Rex versus gorillas versus like this is yeah. that that business beat it right? up beat it up I, I, I just feel like you just glossed past it like we just didn't spend seven dollars and twenty five cents of our hard earned eight weeks of money that we scrounged around to play this game in said arcades I just want to make sure this is the same game that's being processed in the movie yeah. with allegedly the Rock just like just like Two Chain said beat it up like Rampage exactly 
Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah, it's nice, definitely going nice. down. Speaking of other games, Ready. I guess we should go ahead and hit Ready. that video game drop. Ready. Ready. You are now Ready. entering the gamer's gauntlet. Now, uh, we talked a little bit about the Rampage video game adaptation and something that happened this weekend that I told everybody about on previous podcasts. This past weekend was Pokemon Go Fest up in Chicago. Niantic Labs, along with the Pokemon Company, announced the Pokemon first Pokemon Go Fest in Chicago. They made a lot of promises. Hot trailer that came out that it, that was on uh, PlayLifeYourWay.com. We talked a little bit about that on the site. Um, and... Unfortunately, they're going to have to give full refunds to everybody who showed up to that event. Apparently, this is going um, down right now. Apparently, right? apparently, Saturday morning, all of the stuff that was supposed to work did not work so well. So they're still going to have. Yeah, they still had worldwide events. They still tried some worldwide events. Um, you know, but you know, I was doing the podcast at that time, so I didn't really get to do so much of it. But part of why I ignored it was because of all of the big server issues that plagued the game all along and it was almost like that karma and people paid a lot of money people paid for hotels people flew out there with full camera crews to be a part of this thing so that's very unfortunate to the little game that could um but it's not so much going down right now um in chicago so anyway that's what's going on pokemon go what else we got Derek? i want to play a game well um just a, a couple other uh trailers that i wanted to, to go back to i know we kind of jump, jumped over games wise um but uh and uh, this has been something that's been talked about the past couple of years it's actually coming out uh i look forward to it because it's another installment on a franchise that i just it, it appeals to me regardless of how the quality of said movies has and eh, it's declined i'm just gonna go ahead and be be, be direct but <laughs> jigsaw oh uh, yes out I October thought October twenty seventh. I thought I thought I was the only I'm, person I'm excited, excited to see this. Man, thing. I thought I was the only person excited for this. Look, I love that in the no. trailer they specifically said the movie that ran and owned October owned Hollywood. Holly, it's shit. Sorry, the movie that owned what can I remember? Halloween. Halloween. The movie that owned Halloween. Jesus Christ, I couldn't talk. That was so Even perfect. better than the movie Halloween. Yes, absolutely, man. Like, I mean, Rachel and I. Back when we were dating back in the day, which was a Tuesday, we would always, By every way. year, annually, go to see Saw. So when that last Saw film came out, um, it was kind of sad because, you know. Yes. Yeah, man. Like so, Saw 3D. Man. Man. I mean, but those were some amazing films. Tell me a little bit I, about I what I really you- enjoyed it. I mean, this is a, it's a huge storyline. You had the copycats. You had how certain places fit in and Saw 2 that fit into Saw 6 and Saw 1 and so on and so forth. And this one specifically called Jigsaw. And yes, it, I, I feel like there was a lot shown in this trailer, but I, I don't care. I'm, I'm going to go see this that weekend, like period the end. I'm going to go see it. I want to see people mutilated. I want to see somebody falling into a grain silo and pitchforks and saws and weapons just falling in on them. And just let's see how this happens yeah. you know, and get some ideas. Yeah. There was a period of time uh, where, where, um, paranormal activity kind of became that film that filled in where saw left off and, and mm-hmm. every, annually we were getting that, but then they kind of fell off a little bit. So it's about time that, Halloween be a time of year where we are excited to go back to the movies. I'm ex- I'm excited for that, if not for just to see the man, the puppet. I mean, I hope they ha- find some way to bring back. I want to I wanna play a game. I just want like to play a game. I want to see it. I want man. to play a game. I, I'm, I look forward to October being the month that horror movies need to be coming out. I don't want a horror movie in March. Like, I have, like, I'll see it, but October, like, October is when horror movies need to be coming out. I'll give you the last weekend in September. But before or after that, no. Only horror movies need to be competing. Everybody in the, they just need to know that, oh, Blood, gore, whatever, suspense, and listen, to be and I will take them. You just got something, and I will, wild and I will take them all the way up till Thanksgiving. But once Thanksgiving hits, I'm, we need yeah. we need Christmassy feel good type. The stuff. only the only reason I didn't say that specifically right now, BK, is just because, as I said on an earlier show, November will belong to Ragnarok. So, yeah, it matters not what other movies come out in that month. <laughs> we had to hit that air horn. Um, before we get anywhere else, uh. I want to give a quick shout out 
to the Play Your Way Network staff writers. Um, the featured writers uh, on that site. Oh, um, the 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 MVP of the week was Alex Maldonado. Um, Ian Townsend, um, honorable mention. Darius Prather, Hale, thank you for being there. Um, we also got uh, Amit Shah. So if you guys want to hear more about if you should binge Castlevania. You should. Uh, and by binge, uh, Dunkirk a review. Three minutes of your life. Um, the Pokemon Goes Legendary stuff we talked about. Um, also, I'm looking at the website right as as uh, as we oh, speak. Yeah. That's the reason why oh, you yeah. hear me. Uh, we got some Dunkirk versus Valerian. We got Scoop on Black what? Panther. What, what was that? Dunkirk versus Valerian. We'll get to that in the uh, gentleman's gotcha. bet. Uh, the Scoop on Black Panther. Thor Ragnarok. Um, the Room cl- classic. I mean, there's tons of Blade Runner. Every, there's t- look. If you are it enjoying, like, look. It, what what, else, what is not on there? Right? I'm telling you, if you want to play life your way, if you want to understand how to do media, the player go way. to playlifeyourway.com. Join. No need to join. Just watch. Just look, enjoy, and kick back. Now, that being said, we've talked about what's on the site. We've had some fun, but for a second, we want to take a step back and pay respect because, as I said, there's an honorable mention for Ian Townsend because he wrote the article. Uh, Lincoln Park singer Chester Bennington found dead. Uh, Nate, let's go ahead and go into the moment of silence, brother. Yeah, very sad news. Chester Bennington um, found dead in his home. What was it? Uh, Thursday? Yeah, it was. It was Thursday. Yeah. Uh, Oh, there you go. That was actually the song that got me into Lincoln Park. I remember them coming out with One Step Closer and I saw the music video before anything else and I you know this was around the time where rap rock was very popular new metal as they called it you know so you would see a hundred of these bands pop up so I kind of assume like oh this is just a, and then crawling realistically hold on hold on hold, take it was a night yeah take yeah make sure the music goes it, it, cause I'm gonna add it in yeah and crawling was I, I remember seeing that and thinking okay I wouldn't bought hybrid theory and the rest is history from there. Yeah. Fell in love Dude, with Linkin Park. Park, they combined the sound, how Limp Biscuit was trying to do it, how all, those bands in the late 90s and early 2000s were trying to combine having a DJ as part of their band because you had Chester Bennington, a guy who had this melodic screaming ability to sing and rock and then you had Mike Shinoda who had a very hip hop cadence and then you had the DJ Mr. Han um bringing these beats together and you actually had a live band it was a very unique sound from a maelstrom of bands that were trying to do it and they just did it right and they did it on an album that was only like 39 minutes long in hybrid yeah. theory and <laughs> what i came to really love i mean with the between the two of them they wrote some amazing lyrics you know they were great lyricists compared to other rock bands out there and you know every album was different they tried to yeah. do something different that's yeah I, I like what you were talking the collaboration about collaboration with Jay-Z too, Nate later. I love that you kind of went into your personal story let's go around the circle uh, Derek give us a little story about what Chester Bennington meant to you man man back when I um this is back uh, living over off uh, off of Skillman Street shout out to uh to that neighborhood um I took my teenage self after i gathered the what was it uh i want to say i took about twenty dollars of my money to to go see hope that that was enough to buy this album um and walked up to blockbuster music I have no problem showing my age there walked up to the cd store that used to be a sound warehouse man and yeah right you remember exactly which one i'm talking about too you know exactly which one i'm talking about during you that, mean the one I, where you mean the one where i bought uh sub-zero um mythology yes after i broke my arm but i still paid for it and went home and played it <laughs> yes yes i took my phillips cd player up there to buy this hybrid theory album and listen to the entire album on my walk home that's how long of a walk that was that was a long walk. um and <laughs> right because I, there was no privilege. It was if you wanted to go somewhere out of this apartment, you you put on your size 13s and you get after it. And what, that's what I did. Listen to this album 
And it was one of the first specific times in my life where I, I started u- listening to newer music and processing it and hearing what they were saying because I was raised in an old school music household where I listened to a lot of classic rock, a lot of funk music from the 70s. Like, and I, I mean, I, did, I wasn't listening to popular music much until the late 90s. And then this album comes out and they're, you know, speaking to things that I feel like I could relate to uh, growing up. Um, just, just these changes in life. And it, it, I wore that CD out to say I wore that CD out. is still an understatement, but I wore that CD out. I listened to it over and over and over again. Um, Ian, you remember those afternoons, BK, you remember those afternoons where yeah, we were just, absolutely. they would just be on repeat. And then when they hit us with the reanimation album, oh man. Yeah. Um, and it, it was just it was just a, a pivotal moment, and I, I just really enjoyed every single thing that yeah. that, that album had to say. Yeah, I'm definitely a lifelong, uh, and, and I can't say lifelong because they haven't been out my whole life, but for as long as Linkin Park has been out in the limelight and had music out in available to everyone for consumption, I've been a fan from Hybrid Theory on. And for me, the moment that really... Uh, when I hear Chester's voice right now is lost in the echo. Um, I had a situation um, a while back where I had a really bad injury um, to my Achilles tendon and I actually had to kind of learn to walk all over again. Um, A lot of therapy and it took almost a year to get back to where I could actually run and put real weight on it again. And I remember when I finally could start walking outside for long periods of time again and I'd start walking a mile and then two miles and three miles, I was listening to Lost in the Echo and listening to Don't Stay. So those two songs are, you know, I'm getting chill chills all over my body right now because to know that that voice will never make a new song ever again, it, 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 it makes me teary. So, um, we, we give a moment of silence to a lot of different, um, artists and apologies to other artists. No disrespect that we'd never have done anything this intricate, but unlike a lot of other artists and, uh, that we've talked about, both actors and musicians and just general, you know, celebrities, Chester was one of us. Like he was of our generation. At least he felt that way. So losing him felt like, and on top of that, he was a very underrated artist. I think extremely, I think because of the time and period in which he came and where rock music was, rock music didn't really get it shine as it should have. And because they were an amalgamation, they were ahead of their time where EDM is now is thanks to, in large part to reanimation and a uh, hybrid theory and Meteora, of course, Meteora too. So, mm-hmm. I mean, um, um, what's the other song? Um, what's the one that they did for, um, burn it down, burn it down, dude, yeah. burn it down came out like at the beginning of like the, the whole DJ thing. Like when the DJ EDM thing went crazy, people critiqued them for sounding the way they sounded, having this electronic sound to their album. I feel you know, this is a band that's been around for 20 years. Yeah, man. Every single album they have put out has gone to number one. Yeah, man. You know, which is a feat. I don't know if... Every single album. Any artist, any other artist, or... Yeah. You know, it's been a long time since someone has probably done that. But. Yeah, I feel like... I think the thing that hurts the most about this is that while Chris Cornell and Soundgarden made their mark on music history, and you could say that he did kind of get his comeuppance in terms of pats on the back for being the pioneer that he was Chester in my opinion Chester never got those laurels he never got that um pat on the back that people that that bands that like recognition yeah the, you're, Lincoln, you're right. Lincoln Park pe- Lincoln of- Park people never got I think Lincoln Park is this album was the beginning of seeing what Lincoln Park really was about because this is to, to me this is the best album they've had out in a while and um, I just feel bad because they were about to go on tour. Um, shout out to James Turner. He was talking about how him and his brother were going to go see them this fall. So, I mean, man, I mean, this is this one hurt. This one hurt big time. So, um, for anybody who's out there uh, and you need some closure to it, um, feel free on our website. Uh, Ian wrote an amazing um, send-off for uh, an amazing voice that uh, will never be heard again. 
except when we decide to go on Spotify and play. So um, at least we have that. Who cares if one more light goes out? One hundred percent, man. And just to kind of elaborate on your other point, how you said we we don't necessarily do this on every single artist. I just wanted to kind of take a moment and just kind of elaborate. Um, uh, we we talked about it this week in our in our chat with uh, regards to like Prince or Michael Jackson. Yeah. Like these were massive musical icons. Everybody knows who's, who these guys are. However. You and I were kids when we were introduced to their music, but Michael Jackson had been making music for 30 years before I was even born. Yeah. You know exactly. what I'm saying? So I, I didn't hear him start out as a kid and grow up. Yeah. I didn't hear Prince start out and grow up. I didn't hear all these le- musical legends start out and, and, and go from there. You know, I'm, wasn't, I'm not from the Chicago area, so I didn't get to go see a lot of local Linkin Park shows. Yeah. Like people that are from Chi-Town. However... I did get Hybrid Theory the, that Tuesday that it came out after school. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. And from then on, Say No More. Every single album since then. I have an entire playlist on my Spotify that's just nothing but Linkin, Linkin Park. So, like you said, man, it does hurt. Um, now, no, I didn't know him personally, but this guy's within six years of our age. Yeah. He's from our generation. He yeah. was born and raised. and So, it's, it's sad. Six kids, man. Yeah. Six children. And yeah, that's... And, and as a... And to not and to not belabor the point, but we also have an additional moment of silence. Absolutely, John Hurd, uh, the father from Home Alone, and he's one of those supporting actors that we've we've all seen him in dozens and dozens and dozens of movies. Uh, he passed away just Friday, Friday the the twenty first, actually. Yeah. So, shout out to John Hurd as well. Um, that's the dad from Home Alone. Um, to bring a little levity to the whole situation, uh, he portrayed one of the worst parents in all of history. <laughs> <laughs> well, they didn't have they didn't have cell phones. Back yes, then. That's really, really... <laughs> which what makes it even worse. Weekend? Which makes it even worse because if there were cell phones back then, at least you could say, "Well, we can at least call him or or phone him," or you could blame it on the fact that, well, in today's day and age, you don't even have to actually be around your kids. You just have to be in contact with them. But, like, they had no idea where Kevin was. They didn't even know if he was at home. They don't know where they lost him. Actually, technically, they thought they lost him in the airport the first time. So they didn't even know he was at home. You know, it's... (laughs) To be completely fair, though, as a kid watching those movies, it sort of glorified that for me i i fantasized about being left home oh we all did that was the I whole would, thing we I all did we all wanted that booby traps you know my parents would come back i, I would get them real bad with the uh <laughs> look nothing if nothing more than to have that stouffer's macaroni and cheese all to yourself as a kid the, the flavor of stouffer's macaroni and cheese there was nothing better you were like yes i want microwave macaroni and cheese <laughs> What was a microwave? I didn't even know Stuffers did macaroni and cheese. I thought it was only the high top brand. What is this movie <laughs> telling me? Do these things exactly. exist in the world? You get that it. was my thought process. Oh, and dude, and dude, look, and forever I fantasized about cheese pizza. And let me go, let me make sure you understand something. That was the, the one thing that Kevin wanted in that movie. And as an as a, a guy who came from a poorer family, like, we got one pizza. Like, families that got more than one For pizza. The family. I, I grew up wanting to be rich, and I thought rich was just being able to buy more than one pizza at a time. So, like, I just fantasized having a plain cheese mm-hmm. pizza. And then when I finally got plain cheese pizza as an adult, I was like, mm, it's okay. And then I got older, yeah. and then high blood pressure, and then I started to appreciate cheese pizza, plain cheese pizza. <laughs> so, shout out to Kevin McAllister for turning us all on to milk, macaroni and cheese, and plain cheese pizza. That's right. And let's not forget his ridiculous mechanical ability to booby <laughs> trap the house. To reverse engineer anything. <laughs> oh, man. But um, 71 years old, uh, John Hurd. Um, you know, it's, it's a, you know, it's a sad, that's a sad loss, you know, especially for his. <laughs> All right, we're back from a technical difficulty. Uh, we felt like a uh, flag on the play, uh, so a conversation was going down a way we didn't want to. Nate, you got a disclaimer for us? 
too soon, man. <laughs> too I didn't soon. even say anything. It's not like I said they were. <laughs> Anyway. And we're back from another technical <laughs> difficulty. Uh, Nate, you got a... Who dis- <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> Nate. Uh, no, I'm just going to s- switch gears and guide the conversation to a different moment of silence before this gets out of hand. Um, moment of silence for Scott Buck. He is no, He's not going to be the showrunner for Iron Fist Season 2. I think the... Uh, oh, we're... S- um, this is a this is a loss that uh, we are nope. we saw coming. But don't worry, he's still here with Inhumans. Yes, that you can watch at his, IMAX. His, well, that's obviously why he's not doing his Iron indelible Fist Inhumans is going to take off his indelible mark upon the uh, the the darkest time. You know, I'm happy for Scott Buck because everybody knows he the, had something to do with Dexter. No, because like we that. all know because we all know. <laughs> The in every Hollywood story, there's got to be a dark time where they rise again <laughs> from it. Like a and Phoenix Scott from Buck, the ashes. they hire Scott Buck just to be the blemish. Why else? I mean, conspiracy theory time. Conspiracy. Conspiracy. But what if? But what if? It but what if? Conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. 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 My conspiracy theory is that Scott Buck was intentionally hired to do two terrible. Um, projects we all knew Inhumans was never going to work from the get go. It being announced as a major film, it was questionable if it would even be worth doing. So, when they once you make the announcement, you've committed to it. You in Hollywood, you can't just not make the movie. You got to make it, and uh, just like every Sahara, you need somebody to take the fall for it. So, it does. <laughs> I can see why they chose to go TV series rather than. Oh no! It, look, conspiracy it theory. Like conspiracy. No, no, conspiracy theory. <laughs> no, it looks too much like Thor. You got like a diet Loki that wants to be king. They're sending. Some I'm trying to be all funny and serious, but he just said diet Loki. <laughs> yeah. He conjugated diet Loki. Loki. <laughs> In a land that be looks be like more Asgard. appeal to the world more, Nate. We all know outside of the world, it's everything. It's soda light, so it's Loki light <laughs> yeah. everywhere with this guy. But no, but you're uh, talking about it zero being zero calorie Loki. But, Loki but zero. Talking, <laughs> yeah, but Nate, but Nate, you're talking about it being on television, and that thank goodness it was on television. No, no conspiracy theory. Conspiracy. It was intentional. They knew that if they, they kept it on television. Different. They do this on television. Netflix cannot be watched and it won't show up. They couldn't put it in a box office situation where we would know it was a failure. At least with Defenders coming out, it makes it look like Iron Fist was a success. That is my conspiracy theory for this week. Conspiracy. All right, back to you, Agent Scully. (laughs) Absolutely. What else we got, bro? Um, With regards to... uh, Well... Piggybacking off of Nate's moment of silence, but not scoreboarding Nate's moment of silence. He did send me an interesting ar- article with regards to the Alien franchise, which previous to uh, Alien Covenant, it was stated that there could have been three or four even uh, more films of Alien. Reduced down to his quote where he specifically says, oh, there might be two or one, or I'm just not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, and then much to the gratification. Um, I knew how much of, of, a of big me fan since every were. week we've been reporting what that box office has uh, has been doing, and um, which is nothing. It's done nothing the past, well, pretty much since it came out. Let's just be honest. And um, yeah. speaking of speaking of doing nothing, I cannot believe that we uh, did this show without talking about the Justice League. Comic Con sneak peek that dropped while uh, we were getting prepared for the show. Um, in fact, let's take a minute from the show for a second to watch it so that we can talk about it. Yeah, T Rex coming down the uh, Bat Cave apparently with the glass of water there. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a T Rex with a red. Coat. <laughs> like too much. Like t- I, I, my only thing is now before people think that we hated this trailer, I personally didn't hate the trailer. I think Nate liked the trailer. 
Yeah. Uh. Well, Do, I'd you have mean to the whole movie that we just saw? <laughs> we just saw the whole Justice League in three and a half minutes, four minutes. Yeah. That was the whole movie. Like we got it now. Yeah. Cool. I mean, it's going to be worth. If watching. I watch this with the other two trailers of Justice League, I've seen the movie. W- Everything else now, is going to be unnecessary hey, dialogue. But to be fair, none of what we just saw was in any of the trailers we saw before. They recut this Actually, movie big time in front of uh, the. What came in front of Spider Man? What I was actually going to talk to you guys about with on that previous podcast was a completely different Justice League trailer that I had never seen before that I want to talk about, and I got kind of shut down. But I saw a good chunk of this type of stuff. Like, I saw a ton more Flash, and that's actually what I was going to talk about. But everything that I just saw with Flash was in that other trailer in front of Spider Man that I saw. That's crazy because I didn't even see that trailer. And I realize it's regional. Uh, because Nate mentioned about the Kingsman 2 trailer, but I've been seeing Kingsman 2 trailers since Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, that's nothing Check new. Check this out. The first showing of Spider-Man I saw, and it was actually on a Friday, so it wasn't a sneak peek showing. There were no trailers in front of that showing, actually. The second showing wow. I saw, there was Kingsman trailers, but no DC trailers at all. Yeah, uh, I've been seeing Kingsman trailers s- seriously since Guardians of the Galaxy, mm-hmm. if not before then. Well, and no, the, this was so just... I'm like I already know the pretty much the entire plot of that one. But anyway, back to, I guess <laughs> to the topic at hand. No, no, no. But to I... your credit, you saw it coming, and uh, and you can understand why we were skeptical because maybe they were doing regional testing. You know what I'm saying? It's very possible because I have always one of my I loved the Flash as a kid. I loved the Flash. I think it was incredible. He is an incredible character, and there's so much that he can do. However, I the issue that I've noticed anything with showing flash live action, it's always whenever he's using his speed, Yeah. either you're just not going to see him or it just looks completely corny. Yeah. And then in that trailer before Spider-Man, I got to see flash actually running inside the speed force using like lightning bolts and running and actually showing him moving and it not looking like somebody in front of the camera with the fan blowing and a moving screen behind him. And actually Mm -hmm. looked really neat to actually see him using his powers in a very detailed manner, but they haven't showed that. And any other other trailers or him really even talking because all I see when I see this guy is, you know, we need to talk about Kevin. So it's really cool to see him well, doing this. Well, so to the point that Derek was making, it's obvious that they've recut this movie because very we don't have any uh, of the Whedon, come together. Whedon has had some stuff to do with this. Oh, for sure. We didn't have any of the uh, medieval night stuff no nothing <laughs> nothing uh it wasn't it wasn't centered around finding aquaman like the other stuff has been mm-hmm. yeah. um i mean this, this looks movie, like a completely I, different movie than yeah, the other two trailers and i i'm actually excited seen. except i agree with Derek. too the whole time i kept saying too much like i think it's a little too much i now i get it because to nate's point as nate and i were watching it Nate was saying, but they got it. What do you expect? They got to because, and they do because at this point, at this point, they have to. They have no choice. Yeah, they don't have the the luxury of just flashing a certain characters of from Justice League and a decent few one liners. They have to show us. Okay, here's everything we got, and I mean, it is too much. But like like you're saying, it's all. What else can they do? I'm just hoping that the guy we thought was Superman was Hal Jordan. I hope it's somebody else, because specifically the line in there that said, no lanterns. Did y'all hear that? No. Oh, the guy with the axe. Maybe I misheard it. The guy with the axe, he said, no lanterns, and then he specifically said, no Kryptonians. So I'm like, I feel like that was, they ha- They must have done, had to do with I each other. I didn't hear that part. Would you? I Did y'all, they y'all want to pause and go lanterns. look back at that? No, no, sure no, no, right? no, no. I'll take your word for it. I'll take your word for it. I mean, I, we'll, we'll, time will show. I mean. If, if y'all want to banter, I'll confirm it. No. no, 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 no. I think that's I think that's good enough. I think that's good enough because we need to move on anyway. It um, definitely looks like Joss Whedon's Justice League. It <laughs> it does it does it, a, a Marvel's Justice League <laughs> yeah. trailer, if you will, <laughs> and definitely very heavy on Diana. Um, so yeah, good good on them for for kind of getting centered on her because she's ultimately. She's it. She's she's the bee's knees. She's the Superman that they need. She's the Spider Man that they need, so for sure. And Derek is gonna be listening to that anyway, even though he said don't worry about it. <laughs> he specifically says he said there's no protectors here, no lanterns, no Kryptonians. Well there you go. So I would love that to be Hal Jordan. Well there you go. The That's the prediction. Or actually, no, I would love that to be John Stewart. John Oh, okay. I got you. 
I got you. Actually, to be honest, that's all, what I would love. All to lanterns see. matter. That would actually it, that would be better than trying to introduce Hal Jordan. Yeah, I agree. Or try to redo him. I don't know. It would be kind of cool. Cy- Cyborg needs a friend, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Give me some skin, brother. What the hell are you talking about, robot? I think we. Do. I feel in like my we head, that's how it goes. This in a previous podcast, but just because of people that have grown up with the Justice League cartoon show, their Green Lantern will be How's John. Stewart. Oh, John Stewart. You're right. You're. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. You're right about that for sure. Justice League Unlimited. Yeah. You. Did, we did talk about that a, yeah. a while back. On the yeah, when we talked about Blackest Night, yep. Nate. Like, yeah. <laughs> Get it? Yeah. Blackest Night. <laughs> Yo, shot. What, what else we got brother um i know we're uh getting toward the the tail end of it but todd mcfarlane did oh, say <laughs> dang it i wanted to sound so serious i wanted to sound so serious todd mcfarlane um along with kevin smith um broke the news that there is a spawn, a rated R, which so was the one back in '97. <clears throat> Michael Jai White, John Leguizamo, and Martin Sheen. Black Dynamite. Um, was uh, that they have they had, that they have a movie? They're gonna make a movie. And For as Nate informed dollars. me, when I get halfway down the paragraph and see their whopping budget of ten million dollars, it leads me to believe that this is gonna be obviously aired on Lifetime. You know, this is Spawn to me is uh, intellectual property that has lost its popularity over the last. Well, I mean, it's it's uh, just it's just like announcing that Carnage is going to be, you know, that they're going to make a Venom movie with with Carnage. It's just from a different time. Tom Hardy cast as Spawn. (laughs) Spawn was best when it was the animated series in the late '90s that came on like HBO. HBO. That was that was the best like Spawn. or, Or maybe. Here's here's well, here's, I mean, besides comedy. here's a conspiracy theory. Conspiracy. Oh. Maybe <laughs> maybe Batle- Batfleck is leaving um, DC to be Spawn. Maybe that's what's happening. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I heard I heard that he wanted to play Spawn. Hey, is it just me or did like him or Affleck, Matt Damon? One of the or two. Is I think. it just me or did Affleck look older, like an older Batman? He they aged him considerably in this trailer from the first trailer. He looked really old in this trailer. Maybe he's gonna die of uh, diabetes or heart attack. Old age in yeah. this one. That's how they kill off Batman. Here you go. <laughs> Twasn't Wonder the Woman. Joker that got Batman? Oh, there's original, <laughs> right out of my polyester pants pocket. Twasn't the Joker that got Batman? Twas old age. Just <laughs> <laughs> then, Batman oh, dies man. of polio. <laughs> so yeah. So and and just if you didn't, if you're slow on the uptake, yes, I did transition into the story that. Uh, Batfleck is leaving the DCEU apparently uh, DC came out with an article Nate actually you're the one who sent it to me so take it away uh, well it was again these are just rumors and should be taken with a grain of salt but, uh, look at all these they, rumors um, and hit, by grain Hollywood, of salt he means a big ass tub of Morton salt look <laughs> I <laughs> <laughs> He, I think uh, it was. I think it was reported by the Hollywood Reporter first, but they were just saying that Warner Brothers is has a plan to transition Batman out or Ben Affleck out as Batman, which again makes sense because there was no reason to try to do old Batman except to kill time. him off. Breaking the news, theory. boys! Thirty-four minutes ago, Ben Affleck specifically comes out and quotes that he is not leaving, despite the recent rumors. Batman is the coolest fucking part in any universe. Affleck told the audience. Now, this is according to Polygon dot uh, net, as well as I think there was a yeah, Hollywood Reporter. He's at Comic Con right now. Mm-hmm. So, but, well, well, see, here's the thing. Here's, well, I mean, is he going to say what? any? different exactly i mean but here's the thing but he's not really denying anything yeah well but here's the problem but here's the problem with his credibility because affleck is the one who came out and fed the rumors that he was going to leave batman he was saying that part of the first of all he backed out of directing the film okay the second thing is he actually on jimmy kimmel live i believe he was talking about how stressful it is to be it's part of this movie like that's the only thing people want to talk about and he kind of almost regrets being a part of the project because of that so i mean he he's he doesn't come out and say that specifically but he comes dangerously close to saying that so it, it the the rest go ahead go ahead go ahead, no, you go ahead. No, go. i'll go i think I, what I, I, <laughs> go ahead. I think what it, you know he'll might be in justice league too but i gotta assume they might be thinking of 
recasting for the standalone. Of course. Once they do a younger, the entire yeah. quote sounds very. I'm just saying this just to maybe kind of mm-hmm. curb the rumor that, as BK just pointed out, that he perpetuated. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Batman's the coolest part of any universe. Marvel, DC. I'm thrilled to do it. It's amazing. I can't believe it. Everybody tells me I'm their Batman. And Matt Reeves, I'd be an ape on the ground for Matt Reeves. I'm blown away, and it's an exciting time for the DC universe. I'm excited to be Batman. That just sounds like a repetitive, hey, I was just kidding. Look at this. This is something shiny. I'm not leaving, blah, blah, blah. But if he does, I, sounds like Joss, like, why, why even address it? It sounds like Joss Whedon righted the ship, and everything is right with the world again. And uh, DC is like, you know, we're going to feed this story out there just to put you back in place. You know, put you in your place. Oh, you can go. We have plans for you to leave if you want to go ahead and leave. Oh, you want to stay now? Okay, well, get on Comic-Con stage and say that. Do, do, you know, soft shoe for me real quick. <laughs> give, me a little, give me a little Blackest Night action. Uh, so, here's the thing, man. If they're, here, Here's what makes sense to me. If they are talking about the Flash movie that still doesn't have a director and oh, I still want it to happen, if they're talking about that it's going to take on the Flashpoint storyline, yeah. it makes sense for Ben Affleck to leave the the casting. It makes sense a, yeah. because he wouldn't even be part of that. And especially if they're going with the Flashpoint storyline on that. Yeah, that's another it, thing. It makes sense know. to me. I mean, it, it's not too, too far-fetched. It's officially titled Flashpoint. Ah, I didn't hear that. We yeah. just I just heard that for but the first time. But still as Derek mentioned, no director. After <laughs> yeah, I it's mean, a yeah, no director. Door of directors, but, I think. But the story's there. <laughs> is if, the Flashpoint I mean, a question mark? Flashpoint is said that that's the direction that No, I said going. I said is the Flashpoint a question mark? Because of the, <laughs> you know, exclamation point, Flashpoint. It's the question that drops. Exactly. And the question is, <laughs> do they have a director? <laughs> no. Who, who wants to take on, I mean... That responsibility. Yeah. First of all, you got to read comics to even appreciate what they're trying to do. And you would got to have all the other Justice Leaguers in that movie. And the only director sense. who's qualified to do it is Kevin Smith. And I love Kevin Smith, but he's not that great of a director. Period. No, I... Whoa! This just Hot in. sports opinions right there. Joss Whedon going to... <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, think about this. Kevin Smith Whedon. has been... Telling everybody, hey, I'll direct a movie if you really want me to. And, like, nobody's like, no thanks. We'll steal this guy from our competition first. <laughs> we'll do the hardest thing we could possibly do and go around you. In fact, John Favreau will select him for more projects over you. Which I would prefer. I mean, John, he's a great director. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Happy I mean, is doing his yeah, thing. Exactly. exactly. You know John what I'm Favreau saying? Is awesome. Which, yeah. speaking of Happy and just going over back to, to that universe, you guys had some crazy awesome theories about the upcoming Infinity War and what's going down and with what's all been revealed this past week. Uh, just going through our chat just now was just a reminder of how how much, how inferior I am with my knowledge on what compared to these two captains over here between Nate and BK. I mean, these guys have great great theories how you were talking about how um just like we talked about on the last week on oh are you yeah okay like now you, what you're what you're that. talking about is that uh that concept art piece that came out and uh yes the speculation yes, 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 and you know we started speculating in our chat because uh ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between we do talk on a google chat uh every week uh shout out to google we expect that check to come at some point for that uh, plug, but anyway, um, <laughs> Thank you. but basically, um, we're not the only people who caught on to that. Other people had the similar theory. Um, in fact, the, the the winning theory right now is that where you see, um, oh, what ended up happening is a story broke that there was a screen grab from some sort of monitor from a, a daily video thing happening on a set that some person shot, some like assistant shot and posted online and you can see spider-man talking to um strange yeah dr strange go ahead and take it away if you know it Nate. No, that, that, that described it right there yeah and so essentially the script supposedly that <laughs> that you see in the subtitles is dr strange saying uh peter we need you to protect them they're not dead so the theory is that not only do you see the people on that poster that is a scene of them coming back to life um and maybe we can get Alex Maldonado to write something on it so that people can actually see 
the poster image that we're talking about. But in addition to that theory, the theory is that Peter is coming back. Uh, Quicksilver is going to be coming back through that same portal, or perhaps that Thanos is going to be using fallen heroes that have died in other movies against the heroes to play tricks with their mind because Scarlet Witch is a considerably strong person that would be a big threat for Thanos. Exactly, especially with him getting the gauntlet and having the ability to so, control somebody's mind and so on and so forth and having telepaths at his disposal. Which I would love Man. to see uh, Peter Maximoff back. I would love to see him back. Nate is looking at me and he's how, like, how quick Silver catch coming? the bullets? <laughs> <laughs> Nate's looking at me like, no, not Wait, at all. So Shut it down. Six lines in the movie, and five of them were, you didn't see that coming? <laughs> I had little picture by my bed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Oh, I had dust breakfast no. for sandwich. Dust sandwich yeah. for breakfast. It matters for not what I ate, but I run fast. stare at Stork Bomb. <laughs> my dogs <laughs> are hungry! <laughs> Where is my bird? I want my bird. <laughs> Somebody get him a bird. Somebody get him a bird. It's a good bird. Yo, shout out to that actor bird. that played Justin Hammer. I know Justin Hammer was a sucky character, Sam but he Rockwell. played the hell out of that. Sam Rockwell, Sam Sam Rockwell. Rockwell. Look, a good actor. He played man. the hell out of that cowbell. I'm telling you, dude. He did that thing. <laughs> Oh. Man, I would love to see Justin Hammer in more movies. Like, I really do. Would yeah. love to see Hammer and Hammer Tech and more of that as the butt of the jokes. All right, yes. we've we've held off. I mean, I need to I need to slow down because we've worked it. I need a glass of water because I mean we have crammed as much of these things we can into a cram hole, That's if you will, says. with no Vaseline. Ooh. <laughs> God damn it! I'm glad y'all set it off. <laughs> <laughs> There was I feel one. like, is this going to lead toward the part where we may have to dine on a smidge of crow? Well, uh, absolutely. What we have to do is, normally, we're going to go ahead and play the drop, because we know you guys out there love to hear it, so hit it. Bets, bets, bets. Place your bets here. We got a gentleman bet right over here. Let's get it going, boys. Yeah, so that's normally the gentleman's bet. We normally, this time of the show give you guys some as Derek likes to say hashtag hot sports opinions about what's coming up um in the uh box office we are going to take a week off because we royally messed up um instead of it being a gentleman's bet we're going to give this part of the show we're going to dedicate it to the ladies somebody with a sexier bass voice than me there you go Nate you got a sexy bass voice go and give it to it the hello ladies yeah Oh, there you go. Hello, hello, ladies. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hello, ladies. Have you? Uh, would you, do you need to return some library books? Huh? Uh, that Nathan? Nate. That was not. I have a <laughs> rapist wit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're gonna. I bet I can run faster, horny than you can scare. And with that, we're gonna play the track, <laughs> Ladies' Night. Yeah. So yeah. So it's oh, Ladies' yeah. Night. Um, we messed up. We called the top five for this week. And the first time we've ever done it, and we screwed it up. Uh, we forgot that the number two movie was going to be Girls Trip. Shout out to Queen Latifah and the fine as Jada Pinkett Smith. Um, we totally did not. We we just like forgot. We thought we was in a man's world, <laughs> but we thought we forgot it wouldn't be nothing, nothing without a woman. <laughs> oh God. This is a man's uh. world. This is the man. So true, so true. In true three men talking about movies coming out, we talked about we were, war. Uh, we talked about we showed. We, we even brought up Despicable Me three. Look, <laughs> overlooking. Shout out, shout out to Megan, Megarita on the rocks on Instagram. We totally did the man thing and just left out the most. Like, probably the biggest girls' trip themed, like, girls' night theme movie has been out in the last six months. And it was with some of the most popping actresses ever. Uh, and not only that, you know, uh, the blackest dude on the whole podcast didn't even say, hey, there's a black movie coming out this weekend, too. You know, I'll talk about supporting black films. Why didn't you say anything about Man, it? Man, I told, look, I Nate, you you're the blackest thesis, guy man. out of us, and you should have known better. <laughs> you need a shop shoe for us. Anyway. 
Um, but yeah, uh, we're going to talk a little bit. Uh, Derek, you want to take lead on this and talk about Girl's Trip and what it did in the box office? Well, yeah, we can. Um, well, you want just a quick synopsis rundown on that particular movie, what that one's about? Yeah, absolutely. Wait, what the yeah, actual movie's um, about? <laughs> it doesn't the title say it's all say it all? Girls' night. That's <laughs> girls' trip. Nate's gonna Nate's gonna take it away. Go ahead, Nate. <laughs> girls' trip. Uh, movie about a trip with girls. <laughs> and um, you know, uh, obviously they get into some tomfoolery. I assume, but don't trip yeah. because <laughs> there are girls oh. on this trip. <laughs> uh, four lifelong friends. Weekend getaway. They go to some music festival. Sisterhood is rekindled. It, it. We've all seen this movie before. It's called The Hangover. It's called any movie where friends get together and spend the weekend. It's just the casting is done very well on this, and the, the, the public opinion is loving. Oh yeah, the movie. audience score on it, uh, on Rotten Tomatoes is eighty seven percent, and the tomato meter for critics is eighty nine. So oh, wow. it's definitely good. It's definitely good. The I only mean, reason this w- won't be number one is because of Christopher Nolan's sweet pineapple protein. And what is the expectation on uh, Dunkirk? By the way, Do we got a uh, Dunkirk. It's uh, they're they're projecting right around fifty to fifty two million on that one um so you know right about where we were all, all except thinking. for except for me and uh, i was wrong but uh, to my credit well, if it goes a dollar over 50 mil then derek, derek, then derek would be right too or something like that <laughs> you originally no, no. i i re really listened, I listened to really hey i had to try i had to try <laughs> you originally said it was gonna do like 120 I did. 112 yeah and then down. throttled it back to 75 <laughs> yeah. But, but do you blame crazy, me? But do you blame we me? We had the right idea yeah. of why it won't do that. Yeah, much. you're right. We just forgot about the. If, girl but one that if was Girls going, Trip hadn't reason. come out, then maybe Dunkirk might have done. I, I, <laughs> think, Nate, I'm going to pat you on the back because you tried to help me out. Completely different audiences. One thing that I did call that Alex Maldonado gave uh, Derek credit for is that old people would be the people watching this movie. The people who normally don't go and see films yeah. are going to be out Shout to out this. to when BK said, people who are going to go see Dunkirk are going to send their kids to watch Spider-Man. I'm like, people who are seeing Dunkirk have kids that are in their 50s. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, I mean, I'm going to say Dunkirk should have done the 112. And considering it did 50... Like fifty to fifty two, and no, and but while, it's on par with like Nate said last week with an average Christopher Nolan opening. Yeah, yeah. Well, what well, that's what I'm saying is if the only reason why it it's not doing ability. better is because of all of these other films that are out right now. Because of Girls Trip, it's not that's, just, that's but not just be that. Like Thirty million. Well, not just that. I mean, Valerian to his credit is going to take twenty, close to twenty, which is more than we thought it was going to take. I, I mean, don't I, even I, know if I it'll said, hit twenty. I said at least twenty. I said fifteen. You were at nineteen. Yeah. Oh no, I think I'm. I no, think I, I said nineteen. I said nineteen. I, I don't know. Nate said fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. I said nineteen. You said nineteen. Yeah. And I was like twenty-one or twenty-two. I can't. Yeah. Remember. And that's where the be- that's where we're at with the gentleman's bet. Since the top five is going to be thrown out, I think we just need to take those. St- yeah, but but we all broke it down that we were just looking at. Valerian we did. We did. Since we all we did. And uh, yeah, absolutely, Valerian. Um, it's it, looks- and it's right on pace to yeah. stink it up. Yeah. As as we all, <laughs> but again, before we uh, decide to go away from, before we think that it's a man's world, it's a man's world. It would be nothing, nothing, without a woman or a girl's trip. So, <laughs> shout out to Girls Trip for taking the number two spot, and shame on Spider Man for coming in fourth place. Jesus Christ, who would have thunk it? Spider Man, only three weeks in the game. Man. Coming off a of July Fourth weekend, still doing well, bro. Yeah, but mm, man, mm, conspiracy theory. <laughs> conspiracy. Marvel has brilliantly <laughs> inoculated this damn movie from being able to do anything against their future films. It is competition fodder for Ant Man and Wasp. That's that's going to be its comp- competition fodder. Yes, <laughs> fodder. Yes, they gave Sony just enough. Oh man, that's. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little taste. You know? <laughs> next one you got to pay for. Oh, and yeah. speaking of the next one, wait till you find out we're going to kill Spider-Man in Infinity War. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Take that, Sony. <laughs> standalone Venom, will you? We'll show you why it's standalone yeah. Venom film. <laughs> next week, uh, anything that you guys are excited to see next week? Uh, you know, the illustrious Charlize Theron. Has got her. Uh, she got one of her own. Shoes on. She got one of her own. 
She got one of her own. What do y'all think that? What do y'all think that movie is gonna do in the box office? I don't know. It's uh, directed by one of the 30? directors of the team that did John Wick. Yeah, dude, it's so, like a female John Wick. I think it. Yeah, it looks to have pretty cool action. And that mashup of that Kanye West with the Dur- uh, is it Duran Duran uh, song in that trailer? Man, it's so yo with personal Jesus. Personal yes, Jesus yes. Sound it. Derek. Oh, the one for the um, Aqua Vivo, uh, uh, the the men's cheap men's perfume. Commercial, Aquavelva? yeah, Aquaville or something yeah. like that. It had a young person, yeah. But um, Derek, can you do me a favor real quick? Because you usually are the guy that has um, box office mojo open while we do the show. Can you give us what the rundown is for uh, the movies next week? Because we will never not do this show and not the, have this. The the biggest movie, I think. I mean, you got Atomic Blonde and then the Emoji movie. So I guess we we got another kids flick. Uh, and honestly, those are the two biggest movies coming out and like Valerian. next week. I mean, there, there's not much. And so the city of a it, next <laughs> weekend's going to be eaten up again by Dunkirk Girls Trip. Would you, um, would you say their name? Would you say their name? Valerian second win. and the city of a thousand. Or, uh, Valerian doesn't even have a first win. I just love that we've never actually said the name of the movie in its entirety. Yeah, even well, in the movie, would? even the wor- no one wants even to. the vocabulary budget was overspent. Hey, have you ever seen Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets? No. <laughs> it doesn't ring a bell. Yeah. Did y'all ever... Did, but, let me ask y'all this. Okay, we talked about regional exclusives. Did y'all ever see um, the the like the like trailer that was in theaters forever for Valerian with uh, Carolette Delevingne? Or where she was like, she I'm Carolette Delevingne. I'm in Valerian. Uh, it was like the worst. <laughs> did y'all not see that? Did y'all not have it in your respective cities? No. It was the most terrible. It was like a little trailer that they would play before every film out here in Atlanta. And maybe they maybe they um, filmed some of it in Atlanta, and that's how they got to the all of the different like franchises out here to play it. But it was like a, a vignette that they would play before oh, the actual nice. trailers for other films. And it was Cara Delevingne like, in an interview room. And she'd be like, hi, I'm Cara Delevingne. And she did a little dance with her head like she did when she was... Oh, and she's like... <laughs> <laughs> when she was in Tantris and she's like I'm Cara Delevingne and I am in Valeria and I'm saying he have a thousand corpses blah blah blah, blah. It's just a like, thousand corpses <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like Jesus the mashup with Rob this Zombie movie is gonna Valeria like, in the house of a like, thousand corpses my wife my wife Rachel and I we do this thing where we we do the Siskel and Eber thing where we uh, do a thumbs up and thumbs down to each other whenever we see a trailer and every time we saw a Valerian trailer we always did a unanimous thumbs down Every single time. So shout out to Carol Delevingne for telegraphing that this movie was going to be terrible. Uh, shout out to you. You are the MVP of the week. <laughs> Absolutely. But honestly, Atomic Bond is going to be the biggest one next week. I'm I'm looking forward to the August 4th weekend uh, with the Stevie King adaptation of Dark Tower as well as Detroit starring John Boyega. That's really what I'm looking forward to. But yeah, unfortunately, I, I, we're getting into that part of the year where we're almost we're over the hump toward Christmas. So we're closer to Christmas than we've ever been before. And mm-hmm. we're now on the downturn from from well, That's fr- true every day. Yeah. Right? And, well, <laughs> no, no, because you, you know there's a part of the time of the year where you're the, far away from yeah, um, no, I go Christmas, but then you're getting closer back to it again because it's kind of cyclical when you think about time. But like what I mean by that is where like a no parking after midnight <laughs> sign. It's always after yeah. or it's always before midnight. I don't exactly. know. You get but, to March and you're like, God, I'm so far away from Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Don't lie. We all do that. God, I wish it was. I get, wish it was end of july but anyway when you get toward the end of july we're you know we're we're in the afterglow of the summer movie blockbuster so not as much buzz going on right now uh, all the stuff that we were looking forward to it's all stuff oh i wanted to see that too okay that's coming out so as we get closer toward football season hit that mm, yes it's time for the sports rundown brought to you by the play away podcast take away gentlemen it's time. it's time. All right, that's right. It's time. It's time. It's time for the sports rundown. It's time for the sports rundown. We're gonna be we're gonna be giving you guys some sports uh, stories as we're getting closer to our preseason. So please believe it. You will get more NFL esque stories from us. Please believe it. Um, we're also getting closer to John Jones and DC with UFC. Uh, we're also getting closer to Conor McGregor. <laughs> 
and Mayweather as well. So sports is coming uh, if you've been wanting that. But we are still going to continue to give you the summer movie blockbusters. The player way. That's right, the player way. So um, what we got? What you guys going up this week? As Derek uh, already started that segment of the show. Um, n- nothing. <laughs> I'm going to be in Columbus, Georgia. All right. Uh, spending some quality family time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's it. You know, something that you can do while you're in Columbus, Georgia. Columbus, Georgia is the home of Weekly Games Chat, uh, one of our sister podcasts. If you have some downtime and you're bored because Columbus is so exciting to be in, um, you can always uh, go on iTunes and listen to Weekly Games Chat hosted by Chris, John, and Sean. So enjoy that time in uh, Columbus. And Derek, what you got going on? I'm going to still churn through uh, this Knights of Sidonia and any other uh, gems that Netflix comes along, which Netflix did does have Rogue One, a Star Wars story on it. And uh, Civil uh, War. They just released this week. And Civil War. I'll be watching that. And Civil War. Yes. And Doctor Strange. Netflix stepped this game up with that. Give it to us. They, they, uh, give it to us. Oh, no. Give it to us. <laughs> they signed a contract <laughs> like a year ago with Disney, so... From that point on, they would get and all 365 them. days later, I got a movie out of well, it. And no, Netflix they, is now owned by Disney. Disney. The Jungle next. Book. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be, I'm telling you, That's Disney's going to buy Netflix, Disney man. Disney will buy Netflix. Prediction. Yeah, Conspiracy absolutely. theory. Conspiracy. Disney's going to buy Netflix at some point. Disney's just going to buy Hollywood. Hollywood will be renamed <laughs> Disney. Yes. Disney yeah. li- Disneyland Disney is Land. more than the entirety of Disneyland Land. Like yeah. <laughs> L.A. will just become one big Disneyland. Disney, Amazon, and Google have now combined to create a whole new solar system in their image. <laughs> Amazing <the> Disneyland. <laughs> oh, a Google. Oh, and real quick, one thing. O.J.'s out of prison. We forgot to mention. Huh? O.J.'s out of prison. Okay. So, shout out to Orange Julius. Nate's uh, opinions of O.J. are completely of his own. <laughs> That we can't put that on the show. Yeah. We can't put that. We can't. Put that, <laughs> that was too hot. I wasn't even going to give any up. <laughs> Man, with those huge. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, and on that bombshell. <laughs> all right. Um, as far as what I got going on this week, uh, the song of fire and the ice continues. Uh, we are one, two weeks now into. Um, Game of, Thrones. Game of Thrones. And uh, so we're super excited about that. So that's definitely uh, a, a little factoid. Uh, Pornhub actually... <laughs> Born, Pornhub actually... <laughs> what are things I didn't think BK was about to say for 200, Alex? <laughs> Apparently Pornhub suffered its largest downturn in normal views for the day of, of that for that day of the week when uh, the premiere of Game of Thrones came out. So Game of Thrones, apparently everybody who go, everybody stopped whacking off and watched the Song of Fire and Ice. Yeah, but well, we can have this in there, but we can't have <laughs> <laughs> this part is acceptable. As as Derek adjusts his cap because he was going to say something way worse. He adjusts yeah. his cap. <laughs> he adjusted his cowboy hat. He was sure. like about to say something, but adjust the cap and not say it. Anyway, well, that's going to do it for this week. Uh, Please uh, go on to playlifeyourway.com because one thing that we did not all three of us talk about is that there is still Comic-Con news coming um, and will be coming probably for another couple of weeks after that. If you want to know what's going on and you want to know how to do Comic-Con your way, log on and our wonderful uh, cadre of writers will uh, keep you up to date on that. And, uh, of course... Uh, you got at Play Life Your Way on Instagram, at Corrupting the System on Instagram. We both are always posting videos and stories, and every now and again, Nate will put up some graphics. So if there's no further ado, for the good of the order, I'm going to close it out with my co-captains, Nate. That's me. And Derek. You already know who it is, y'all. Corrupting the System. But Nate gets to corrupt it more. Scum up the up elbow! <laughs> yes. And with that... Um, we're out of here. See you next week. Peace out, Rabbi. Thanks for listening to the Player Way podcast. Recorded in a single take from Los Angeles, California, Dallas, Texas, and Atlanta, Georgia by Nathan Peterson, 
Derek Lewis and BK Jackson. Our opening theme is titled Bound by Ricky Remedy, courtesy of Elysian Records. And our closing theme is titled Coconut King Diaries by Xander, spelled Z-A-H-N-D-E-R. You can find this music by both Ricky Remedy and Xander and many more tracks on SoundCloud. And remember, no matter what choices you make or paths you follow, just make sure you do it the player way. See you next week.